Hey, what's going on, guys? At the UFC 300 post-fight press conference, Dana White dropped a bunch of big fight news, two pay-per-view main events, and a massive co-main event for one of the pay-per-views. And we're going to take a look at the clip in a second. But it is Islam Makashev versus Dustin Poirier in June in Newark, New Jersey. Co-main event is Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. And then he also announced, and we're going to look at this in this video, but I'm going to make an entire separate video on it, but I want to show you the full Dana White clip since it's all together anyway. He also announced UFC 303, June 29th, Conor McGregor versus Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler now, he left his family two and a half years ago. He's finally getting the Conor McGregor fight. He is iron Michael Chandler right now. He is basking in the glory. I still have my doubts. But we're going to cover that in a whole entire different dedicated video that will be coming out here shortly. I will link it down in the description as soon as it's done as well as the end cards if you want to go check that out. But I'm pumping out content like crazy. I was up until 8 in the morning then I woke up at 11. I've been busy all day. Now I need to record some of these videos. So let's start off by looking at how the news was broke. First off, it's just interesting in general to see what Dana had to say. But I just want to look at the manner in which Dana White broke this news because... I talk I literally literally called this to a T, I think on Friday. And 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 you so many fans have for some reason some warped disillusion sediment on how the UFC announces news and it's just so detached from reality. And this press conference just shows it just perfectly encompasses the reality of the UFC announcing news. And I'm not saying that's a good or bad thing, but after that, then we're gonna react to both of the massive fights that were announced for UFC 302 in Newark, New Jersey. But let's listen to what Dana White had to say and watch. He's talking about something. Somebody brings up and hands him a note. Uh, in the co-main event. I'm uh, getting notes. <laughs> this has never happened before. Do you want to read them? Huh. June 1st, Newark, New Jersey pay-per-view. Main event. Islam versus Poirier. So there you go. You have the main event for UFC 302. We got some more. I'm glad I didn't make this video last night. I thought about making it at 8 a.m., but I was kind of brain dead. I'm glad I didn't make it because we have some more information about how this fight came together. But let's listen to him continue with the announcement. Co-main event, five rounds. Strickland versus Costa. That, that's a banger fight. Again, we're going to talk about that in a second. But let's listen to the final announcement that he makes. June 29th. <laughs> Look at that shit-eating grin, boys. I, I had to pause it there. Look at that shit-eating grin Dana White has plastered all over his face. And by the way, peep the power slap cup over here. I mean, he doesn't have the logo facing the right way, but peep the power slap cup. Connor versus Chandler. Woo! <laughs> Five rounds, 170 pounds. Connor versus Chandler, UFC 303, International Fight Week. Michael Chandler may finally get his red panty night, for lack of a better word, even though that's a fallacy. I'm going to cover that in an entirely different video, but let's talk about the first two fights that he announced for UFC 302, June 1st in Newark, New Jersey. Main event, let's start with the main event, Islam Makashev versus Dustin Poirier for the lightweight title. You know, guys, I, I don't enjoy complaining about these things. I really don't. And I know someone's going to be like, Joey, this is a great fight, blah, blah, blah. I think this is a fine fight. I think it's a fine matchup. I think it'll be mildly interesting. Is anyone else, like, is anyone else starting to feel, I don't even know what the term for, I'm just down in gen, I'm sick and tired of undeserved title shots. And I'm sick and tired of the MMA community picking and choosing when they complain about an undeserved title shot. Oh, a fighter I don't like gets skipped over? Okay, I'm happy with that. A fighter I like is getting an undeserved title shot? I like that. I'm just wholeheartedly, flat out, against undeserved title shots. And we're giving Dustin Poirier a lightweight title shot? I'm sure it's a fine fight. I like Dustin Poirier. He's towards the end of his career. I'd love to see if he can get undisputed gold wrapped around his waist in one of his last fights. I would love to see that. I think he has a chance against Islam Makhachev. I'll give my prediction here in a second. I think he has a chance. But, I mean, what are we doing here? Dustin Poirier, 
is 2-2 two and two in his last four fights. He beat Benoit Saint-Denis. He was ranked outside the top 15. And honestly, he struggled with it. And Benoit Saint-Denis had staph infection. Fight before that. And this is just crazy. I mean, July 29th, 2023. Go back to that night. Not that many, not that many months ago. Justin Gaethje sleeps Dustin Poirier out cold with a head kick to the back of the head. Okay? Since then, Dustin Poirier wins one fight. And now he's getting an undisputed title shot. Meanwhile, Justin Gaethje just lost his BMF title. And he got flatline KO'd by Max Holloway at UFC 300. I talked about this in my post fight. If you, if you care to see any of my post fights, I did a post fight breakdown for Holloway versus Gaethje. I did a post fight breakdown for Pereira versus Hill. And I also did a full card post fight as well. If you want to check any of those videos out, I'll link them down in the description. How fast does the MMA game move? And Justin Gaethje, I, I said Holloway was making a mistake fighting Gaethje for the belt. Holloway gambled on himself and won times 10 times a million. I'll say that forever. He gambled on himself and he won times a million. Justin Gaethje took a key, a big keep busy fight and he just screwed himself wholeheartedly. And also, and we'll talk about this in the, in the, in the McGregor Chandler video, which I'm going to do after this. This fight right here, Islam Makhachev versus Dustin Poirier, proves to me what a massive mistake that Michael Chandler made sitting out for over a year and a half waiting for Conor McGregor. Even though now, supposedly, he's getting the fight, he made a massive mistake because Michael Chandler is older than Dustin Poirier. Michael Chandler is on his way out and people are saying, oh, he's nowhere near title contention. Takes one fight. I've been saying this for six months. People think I hate Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler, I've been following his entire Bellator career. I remember the Dave and Buster's commercials from Bellator where Michael Chandler was the face of their organization. Okay, I've been watching him forever. He's one of the most exciting fighters ever. I was like, you know, why isn't he fighting one win? He could be right in the discussion to fight Islam Makhachev. Look at this. He could have been fighting Islam Makhachev. He could have fought Benoit saint and got a win. And then he would be fighting for Undisputed Gold. And then that would even increase his chances to potentially fight Conor. If he loses, it increases his chances to fight Conor anyway because Conor won an easy win. But that's here and we're there. But the point I'm getting to is we're getting another undeserved title shot. What is the UFC doing with their scheduling? They can't figure this out? Why can't they schedule appropriately? I mean, do they, can they not look more than one month ahead of time? Can they not look more than two months ahead of time, really? I don't understand this. It makes no sense at all. I kind of like the fight. I'm excited for the fight. I think it's a big fight in terms of name value. But at the end of the day, it's an undeserved title shot for Dustin Poirier. We get it. He's paid in full. We get it. I mean, Dustin Poirier paid in full. Michael Chandler, see you at the top. Both kind of, you know, throwing out those cornball statements. But two and two. Two and two. Got stopped by Charles Oliveira, got slept by Justin Gaethje. I mean, are we just getting unlimited title shots for Dustin Poirier at this point? Was this his third undisputed title shot? And this time he, he's on a one-fight winning streak against a guy who's ranked outside the top 10. And I understand, and I know someone's going to say this, but we're going to break this down in the video. I understand there's not any other options right now. I know people are going to say Armin. We're going to talk about Armin in a second. I know some people might say Holloway. We'll talk about Holloway in a second. But there's really no other options right now than Dustin Poirier. So I understand it. I understand it. It's big name value in terms of headlining a card. Islam Makhachev, Dustin Poirier is, is a massive fight for the UFC. But they couldn't plan better. They couldn't make their schedule better. Because they should have found a way to either book Gaethje in that title fight back in March or back in February. Islam said he wanted to fight in March. He said he had a lingering injury apparently. He wanted to fight in March. They were unwilling to give that to him. And then... Now, Islam, they want to, they got to keep Islam busy. Obviously, Islam wants to defend his belt. Oh, well, we already booked up all the other notable lightweights on UFC 300. So, now all that's left is Dustin Poirier. Because Gaethje got brutally KO'd. I don't think Gaethje would have took a quick turnaround to fight Islam Makhachev anyway. Holloway is a shoe in now for the Ilya Taporia fight. I think that fight's getting made. I think they're going to tell Volkanovski, you can fight the winner. Sit on the sidelines. Enjoy yourself. Recover your brain. You can fight the winner. But 
you know, Holloway's out of the picture. I don't think Holloway's fighting at 155. I think he's going to go down. He wants to pour you. He wants to go to 45. It makes sense for the UFC. It makes sense for Holloway's career. It makes sense for Taporia. It makes even sense for Volkanovski, in my opinion. So Holloway's out of the picture. So then you got the winner of Armin versus Charles, which is Armin Saryukian. Armin Saryukian wins. And I thought Armin might consider making that quick turnaround. April 13th to June 1st. I mean, that's a really tight turnaround. That's basically six weeks. It's literally six weeks. Armin apparently was, and I thought this, and I thought this, and we're going to talk about the way this was announced in a second. I thought this, but apparently Armin was offered the fight for June 1st. He turned it down. That's when they already had kind of verbal agreements from Dustin Poirier and Islam, and that's when they slipped the note to Dana White, and he announced it. And we're going to talk about the way he announced these fights at the end of the video because there's a... Oh my, um, there's a topic that I really want to cover heavily in this video that's been driving me nuts in the MMA community for many, many years. But overall, how do I feel about the fight? Let, let's get off of, you know, undeserved title shots and I'm just tired of this. But this is the UFC's poor planning yet again. It's a massive fight. It's an entertaining fight. I don't see how Dustin Poirier wins this fight. Dustin Poirier is getting ragdolled in the first round by Benoit saint -Denis. Benoit saint -Denis is not Islam Makhachev. And this makes me so sad. Maybe if Benoit saint -Denis hadn't had staph infection, maybe he could have got a title shot. Now, he would have been kind of still undeserving, but at least he would have been on a long win streak coming off a win over Dustin Poirier. But I just, how does Dustin win this fight? What's he going to pull a guillotine? Yeah, he's going to pull a guillotine right into getting rear naked choked. If he ends up in those positions against Islam, he's not getting out of them. If he ends up in those positions against Islam, he's going to get battered on the ground. If he ends up in those positions against Islam, he's going to get choked out. So I don't see this playing out any differently than Dustin Poirier versus Habib Nurmagomedov. Dustin Poirier has a propensity to give up his back nonstop. He has a propensity to make low fight IQ moves like pulling guillotines. And he's not a career grappler. He's a career striker. He has good boxing. Islam Makhachev is one of the best strikers in the UFC. And on top of that, he has the threat of the grappling to back it up. So Islam Makhachev easily wins this fight, in my opinion. Do I think this is a banger card? Yes. I do think this is a banger card, especially now the fact that you add the co-main event, which we're going to talk about in a second. Then you also have Roman Delize, Anthony Hernandez, Dalton Almeida, Alexander Romanoff. And then that's pretty much it for the card right now. I'm assuming they'll announce some more matchups. But Islam Makhachev gets it done easily. I think it's a big fight. I think it'll do big numbers. I'm looking forward to it. But at the end of the day, I want a meritocracy. I want better planning by the UFC. I'm tired of certain matchups that all of us want to see falling to the wayside because of the UFC is like, oh, oh well, we, we got to figure this out in a month. And we only got a month's time and, you know, this and that. I'm happy they offered it to Armin. I believe that's ex I believe last night that's what they did. They offered it to Armin in the back. Armin said, ah, nah, we got to heal up. Maybe we'll fight him in Abu Dhabi. We, we won our title shot later this year. Because Armin earned his title fight. He beat Charles Oliveira, former champion. He's on a long win streak. He has a history with Islam. He's earned his title shot. Why risk it on six weeks' notice? So I respect Armin for turning it down. It's tough to see because Islam Makhachev versus Armin Saryukian would have got me fired up. I would have loved that matchup. But ultimately, it's Dustin Poirier. I get it. I understand. It's still a fun fight, but Islam Makhachev is going to choke him out. Islam Makhachev, rear naked choke. Mark it down. Mark my words. I'm pretty confident that that happens. But we'll see. Maybe Dustin Poirier is training his wrestling nonstop. Maybe he's training you know, the self-control not to pull guillotines nonstop. Now, in terms of the next fight, the co-main event, Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. Five-round co-main event. Let me give an applause to the UFC right now. You know, I complained about the undeserved title shot. I absolutely love Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa, and I love that it's five rounds. I absolutely love that it's five rounds. We need more important fights that are on big cards to be five rounds regardless if they're main events or not, regardless if they're a title fight or not. We need more five-round, non-title, non-main events. And Sean Strickland versus Polo Costa is exactly that. Sean Strickland, it came out recently. I think Strickland talked about it. Also, Costa talked about it. That Strickland supposedly turned down Costa because the UFC was offering him under 200K and 200K. If you don't understand show win, you get a show amount. And then if you win, basically you get double that amount. So show 200, win 200 which I think is ridiculous for a former champion in Sean Strickland. So apparently turned that down and had some negotiations with the UFC. They decided to up his pay at some point to whatever it might have been. And he accepted the fight against Paulo Costa. And I love this fight. This is a compelling matchup. And I, I don't, honestly, I think a lot of people are going to say easily Strickland wins. I favor Strickland in a five-round fight. 
I'm probably going to pick Strickland, especially considering it's five rounds. But Paul Acosta may be a nightmare matchup for Strickland because Strickland's fights a lot of the time come down to optics. I think he lost to Drikas Duplessis because of optics. When he's backing up the entire fight, when he's being pressured, and he's just pitter-pattering with a jab, you know, he talks about he wants to kill this guy, kill that guy, he goes out there and pitter-patters with a jab the entire fight, and he's getting backed up, he loses scorecards when it's a close fight. He loses rounds when it's a close fight. That's what happened against Drikas Duplessis because he's backing up. Paulo Costa, what is his biggest strength? Marching you down, pressuring you, combinations. I think his power is a little bit overrated. I mean, people act like just because of Paulo Costa's physique, he's some one-punch KO knockout artist. I don't think he's that. But I could see Costa winning this fight. I think Costa, a lot of people are going to overlook Costa in this fight. I could see Costa pulling this off. But this is kind of a tricky fight in the middleweight division right now. Strickland's coming off that close title loss to Drikas Duplessis. He never defended his belt. And a lot of people wanted to see him get a rematch. Obviously, we already knew. I mean, I confirmed this two months ago for you guys. But now we clearly know, undoubtedly, we're getting Israel Adesanya versus Drikas Duplessis next. Most likely going to be in Perth, UFC 305, I believe it is. So UFC 305 in Perth will be Drikas Duplessis versus Israel Adesanya. I don't know where the winner of this fight goes. And by the way, June is going to be phenomenal. UFC Saudi Arabia stack, Hamza Chamaya, Robert Whitaker. You now, you now have this card. Um, June is going to be... And then you, obviously you have the Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler card, which I'm assuming the UFC... I mean, I don't know. They might actually not stack that card because Conor's on the card, so they probably won't stack it. But June is going to be phenomenal. We got to bite down on the mouthpiece and, and grit through May, which is going to be tough. But I love Strickland versus Costa. I don't know where the winner ends up. Costa, you know, honestly, Costa has one of the shittiest resumes I've ever seen. Lost to Robert Whitaker. Last wins against Luke Rocco, lost to Marvin Vittori, lost to Israel Adesanya. Does he even have a win that's still in the UFC? I don't believe so. He doesn't even have a win that's still in the, on the UFC roster. Meanwhile, Strickland, I think he went from the most underrated fighter on the roster to one of the most overrated fighters on the roster. He loses to Jerikas in a close fight, beat Israel Adesanya in a title shot he never deserved, but nonetheless, he beat him. Before that, beat Abus Magomedov. Beat Nasruddin Amavov on short notice, which I think is a solid win. Lost to Jared Kennanier in a razor close fight. Lost to Alex Pereira where he got KO'd. No shame in that. I don't know, you know, what he, what is he going to have to do to get a title shot? Honestly, if he beats Costa and then let's say Adesanya wins, but let's say Hamzat beats Whitaker, I think they're going to do Adesanya versus Hamzat. If Drikas beats Adesanya and Hamzat wins, I mean, so basically no matter what, if Hamzat wins in Saudi Arabia... He's getting a title shot next. So Strickland still, even if he beats Costa, he's still kind of odd man out, which I don't think is necessarily fair. But again, I don't I don't even think beating Paul Acosta really kind of guarantees you a title shot. But at the same time, Strickland was a champion. He did lose in a razor close fight. There is something to be said for that. I don't think he deserves an immediate rematch. But nonetheless, but he's not even a shoe in I mean, he, he still could be two fights away. He still could be two fights away from a title shot. And I don't think the UFC is in any rush to put Sean Strickland back in a title fight anyway. But overall, love the fight. I'm going to go Sean Strickland for my early prediction. I'm going to say probably decision. It's going to come down to cardio. And I just think Strickland has way better cardio. But Costa is kind of a nightmare matchup in a way. Nasty kicks, presses forward, throws combinations, and Strickland does not fight well when he's really being pressured and backed up. And I think that's what Costa can do. But ultimately, Costa, like, he doesn't really have the craziest power. And also, he slows down. He looked very good in the Whitaker fight. Even in a loss, looked very good in the Whitaker fight. But I just, I don't know if I'm ready to pick him just yet. I mean, I just went through his resume, garbage resume. I don't know if I'm ready to pick him just yet against a guy like Sean Strickland who just went to a close decision with Drikas and before that beat Israel Adesanya. I don't know if I'm ready to make that jump yet, but I do think Costa can win that fight. I do I do think Costa could win that fight, but ultimately I'm going to go Sean Strickland early prediction by decision. Now, one last thing I want to talk about before we end this video really quickly is the nature of what where how the fight was announced. Okay, somebody came out with a note, a scribbled up note with all the news and dropped it on Dana's desk or, or table and Dana just reads it off of the post-fight presser. I myself have no problem with this whatsoever. I called this on Friday. People constantly say, oh, the UFC is going to have a big announcement at the presser. Oh, the UFC is going to have a big announcement on the card. Oh, the UFC is going to have a big announcement at the weigh-ins. 
It doesn't matter. They, they don't care. They don't care that much. These announcements are meaningless. It's just a way to get information out there. Whether they announce it at the press conference, whether they announce it at the weigh-ins, whether they announce it on the card, whether they announce it at 2 o'clock in the morning at the post-fight presser, it's all the same. And I don't understand why the MMA community fetishizes essentially these grandiose announcements that literally never come. Everyone's like, oh, big announcements coming tonight, big announcements coming at the press conference. And I'm like, okay, maybe, maybe it could happen. No. Dana White's just like, oh, here, here's a note. Here's a scribbled up note. Let me announce these fights. That's it. That's it. So stop fetishizing. I think that's a word. I'm pretty sure that's a word. Stop doing that. It's, they're never gonna, they're almost never going to happen. Dana's just going to announce them at the post-fight presser. Someone asked me on Friday, oh, do you think there's going to be a big announcement on 300? I said, no. If there's any announcement, it'll most likely be at the post-fight presser. Dana will just announce it at the post-fight presser. It gets out. Everyone shares it around. Nonetheless, I don't understand. Like, what are these major promo announcements do for you? I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong for wanting them, but I'm just saying there's not a, really a history there. Because the UFC... Once they lock in their plans, they like to announce it right away so it does not get leaked out because they like to own their news. So that's why, okay, Armin turned it down. Boom, Dustin's locked in. All right, let's announce it right away. Announce it at the post-fight presser. That's it. So we, we really got to stop. People got to stop hyping up these fake announcements that they just, oh, Dana said this on a stream with the Nelk boys. Oh, my God, there's going to be an announcement tonight. We got to stop that. We got to stop that. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. I'm going to make another video about Conor McGregor and Michael Chandler being announced for UFC 303. Let me know what you guys think of these matchups. Let me know what you think about the MMA community as a whole, you know, making these, thinking, like, making up these fantasy stories about grand announcements. I'm just curious what your guys' take on that is. It's not a big deal. I'm not, you know, acting like this is some massive deal, but it's just kind of getting annoying. Everyone always has these mega plans that they then spread around on the internet, and then everyone's asking about it, and then it just never happens. And it's just made up from the get-go. So I'm just tired of hearing about it. That's the only reason I'm talking about it in this video. But let me know what you think of Islam Makhachev versus Dustin Poirier. Let me know who you think is going to win. Let me know what you think of Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. And make sure you check out that Conor McGregor, Michael Chandler video. It's going to be an absolute heater. It's going to be coming out shortly. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Like the video. And I will see you in the next video.